A spectacular Anzac Day classic at the MCG. The Pies by 11 points, but there's already discussion today about the fallout in particular from a Collingwood perspective in terms of some key injuries. I reported last night that Nathan Kruger looks like he's out for the season. Craig McRae, the coach, revealing in the press conference that Kruger had re-injured that left shoulder. It's sort of taking a punt on it, really. Hopefully it didn't pop out again. But he'll see a surgeon as soon as today, Kruger, and it's expected that he will need surgery and miss the year. But the big news also is Brody Grundy. Now, we reported last night on the news that Grundy looked particularly sore post-game in the rooms, more sore than just your usual corky. Grundy, I'm told, has had a scan this morning for a potential PCL injury. That's a knee injury, the classic Ruckman's knee injury that uh, can be a bit like Pitonase from Carlton and can see you, well, in the worst case, miss the season. Now, Collingwood, at least initially, while optimistic that Grundy was okay because he played out the game and they thought it looked relatively okay, but he was sore in the rooms. He's having that scan today. The concern is a PCL. And look, they can range, but uh, a range that I know that Sam Edmonds already spoken about today online is 12 weeks. I think that's a, a realistic estimate. That it's a bit like how long was a piece of string at the moment. But clearly, he's one of Collingwood's most important and best players, Brody Grundy. There's big concerns around a PCL knee injury, which could see him miss a significant chunk of the season, which you'd think would have a massive bearing, given they'd have to rely on, uh, for example, Mason Cox in the ruck, um, and Grundy's one of the best, well, in form, one of the best ruckmen in the competition. So, look, that could have a massive bearing on Collingwood, certainly for any finals chances and things like that. But they were gallant yesterday, the Pies. They just got the job done in the end. It was interesting, the view from inside the Pies' rooms, perhaps, I think uh, an unofficial one, was that uh, Essendon uh, was pretty good around the contest, um, but the Pies were accurate, only kicking three behind. So they got the job done on Anzac Day on a massive stage. A good move from Craig McRae clearly was putting Scott Pendlebury um, back into the middle at one stage, which is a move they've used a couple of times this season. But at a couple of crucial stoppages, uh, they sent Pendlebury in there late yesterday and uh, and it did pay big dividends. A good story was Jack Ginevan. He's become somewhat of a cult hero. I know there's some discussion already about whether he divides opinions. He cel- his celebrations were criticised um, earlier in the season. But uh, he did the talking with his boot yesterday, kicking five crucial goals. He kicked really accurately. He was calm under pressure. He loves that people doubt him, he reckons. He just t- loves trying to prove them wrong. And this is a short clip of what he said post-match. I just want to thank Essendon for a good game. Uh, yeah, appreciate everyone coming out. The crowd's pretty amazing. And yeah, just appreciate the AFL and everyone. So go Pies! He's a bit of a character, Jack Ginneman. He spoke in the post-match press conference as well and uh, said he'd been sort of preparing this for all his life. He's only 19, but in the key moments... He's an absolute beauty and uh, just loves the attention and loves lapping it up and loves the pressure. And uh, he's just an infectious sort of guy. So apparently he divides opinion. I don't know how much opinion he divides, to be honest with you. I reckon he's a little beauty and uh, good luck to him. So I reckon he'll just uh, continue to uh, grab people's attention. An interesting one surrounding Jordan Dugowie, the Collingwood president, full disclosure. My dad spoke pregame on 3AW and said that Dugowie, quote, had been a model citizen, unquote, and said that Collingwood wouldn't and won't. Um, go anywhere close to breaching the salary cap again. So clearly they won't overpay for Dugowie. But the point there is he's been doing everything asked of him. Um, my view, my view on Dugowie's contract situation is that it will in part depend on where the Pies finish because that'll be the compensation they'd get if he went under uh, his free agency. So if they finish around ninth or 10th, for example, um, the compensation for pick, compensation pick for Dugowie would be around 9, 10 or 11. And you'd think you'd want a lot more than that, um, given how good he is. Having said, that, having said all that, if they finish lower, you could get a high compensation pick for Degoe, i.e. a low pick in the draft. And uh, coupled with Collingwood's existing pick, you start to look to set yourself up uh, for the future with two picks inside the first 10. So, look, I don't have an intricate view of Collingwood's discussions with Degoe at the moment. My understanding is there's been no deal put to Degoe as yet. But just in terms of formulating their opinion going forward on what to do with that crucial decision... I think they're, and this is, again, just to emphasise my view, I think their ladder position will have a big bearing on that going forward. So we'll know more, I think, about Jordan Degoe's contract situation with Collingwood probably in, probably in 10 weeks' time or so. A sickening situation with Paddy McCartan in Tasmania yesterday. To set this up, McCartan's been one of the stories of the season, despite his diabetes concerns and, most notably, his eight existing concussions. Sydney gave him a chance. Um, and he's been playing really, really good football. And I know we say a lot of people are good people in football and all the rest of it. He is a great person, Paddy McCartan, and has been a star so far this season. He suffered at least two, possibly three head knocks yesterday. One in particular, a knee to his head. 
He didn't pass his concussion test. I know John Longmire was keen to sort of downplay it post-game, but clearly a ninth concussion on any measure is not a good situation. McCartan was visibly distressed and devastated in the rooms afterwards. And there will be a big discussion this week about how this all plays out going forward. Clearly, the footy community, me included, love seeing McCartan out there. But we're talking about a very serious issue now and multiple concussions. And I went to concussion campaigner Peter Jess a short time ago and asked him in particular um, what he thinks needs to be done. And he explained that, look, Sydney do the concussion tests. Obviously, the AFL play a role. I'm not in any way questioning their expertise. But according to Jess, they should be done independently. This is a short clip of what Peter told me this morning. Um, Peter, thanks so much for speaking to us for Triple M. Paddy McCartan, what's your take out in regards to uh, yesterday's injury and the key message that you'd like to, I guess, convey from a concussion perspective? Well, if you look at the vision, it's quite clear that he's had two significant you know, clashes. Now, um, the club then, or the club doctor then, removed him from play and did a concussion test, which he failed. So. That is the baseline. If he's symptomatic, he should be then going through the full testing regime to you know, confirm his status. Do you think he should play again, Peter? Well, what needs to happen is this, is that we need to do the proper testing um, and find out you know, the extent of the damage. And do you think that testing, Peter, and this is a key point, should be done independently of Sydney and the AFL? It is clear that with the comments coming from the coach, um, he doesn't get the problem or the extent of, um, you know, the types of problems that arise from damage from, you know, concussion. So it should be out of their hands. Sydney did emphasise to me yesterday that given McCartan's history, they did err on the side of caution um, in conducting that concussion test. So hopefully he is okay, clearly, and can play again in 12 or so days' time. Having said that, it's a complex matter due to the multiple number now of these concussions. And uh, I know that the experts at Sydney and the AFL will be no doubt working on that. But that's a, that's a serious and, frankly, pretty distressing story because McCartan's an absolute beauty. The AFL head honchos, most notably Gil McLaughlin, Travis Old and Andrew Dillon, are currently over the Pacific somewhere or over the west part of America because they're heading to New York to up the TV talks with Paramount, who are the parent company of Channel 10 as part of uh, negotiating the next round of broadcast rights. They're also going to speak to some of the key sports as well as some of the key streaming services. I was lucky enough to uh, be a fill in or a sub on the Sunday Rub on Sunday, and we had this story. Gil McLaughlin will lead an AFL delegation that I think includes Andrew Dillon and Travis Old, and they'll go to Paramount, which is the parent company of Channel 10 in New York, in the next 10 days or so, and pitch the AFL's case to Paramount in a bid to get either, or for example, Paramount, but also even Disney and Amazon involved in this next stage of the broadcast deal. Clearly, Gil wants competition between Foxtel, which might float in the future, and want the AFL and Paramount, Disney and Amazon. But Gil is leading a delegation to New York in the next 10 days or so to go and visit the US bosses of Paramount, as I understand. That story confirmed by the AFL last night. I know it's a bit cryptic throwing to my own grab, but uh, that story confirmed by the AFL last night. Gil was actually at the football yesterday as well as Sunday night. So I think he left the MCG and jumped on the kite to LA at about 9.30. But that's what they're negotiating. An interesting uh, side story to all that is that uh, Kylie Rogers is now the acting CEO of the AFL at the moment, which is a great story. Does a brilliant job in the commercial department. So uh, that's a great opportunity for Kylie in the uh, next couple of weeks just to uh, get her feet under the desk there and just see what it's like. She could be a contender for Gill's job. But I think more, not relevantly, but more um, accurately, I think the two main contenders are Travis Old and Andrew Dillon for uh, Gill's job, and they're both on that trip. So it'd be interesting. Uh, you'd be interesting being a fly on the wall on the plane, or uh, in some of their meetings uh, in the next couple of weeks, because they're trying to generate some uh, a big TV deal for the for the game going forward. Um, and uh, that's going to obviously have a big bearing on the play p- players' pay situation and a lot of decisions going forward. And I'll just finish off with some brief ones this morning. Um, Jeff Kennett's been hot on the umpire descent issue. I'm trying to firm up a strong lead that I had over the weekend that uh, Jeff, in fact, wrote to the AFL or voiced these concerns with the AFL and even wrote to all the clubs about it last week. Jeff distributed a letter or a note from what I'm told. Uh, He was coy on that particular point when I spoke to him this morning, but Jeff was in good form. 
I understand he's also taken a step forward in regards to the club reaching out to Cyril Rioli. Kennett was in Darwin, just for some context, last week, attending to the birth of his eighth child uh, that Mark Robinson also wrote up. And uh, I, he ha- did reach out to, to Cyril and they've taken a step forward in that regard. North Melbourne, a big focus this week. There's clearly some concern now that they've gone backwards. That's substantiated in the terms of the fact they were thumped by Geelong yesterday. I think in the similar game against Geelong last year, they only lost by 20-odd points. A cryptic one for mine is that Callum Coleman-Jones, they recruited him. He's not playing, so that's interesting. Can't get a game, but uh, they've got issues beyond selection. There's no doubt about that. The Bombers, they were competitive yesterday. I think in all the scenarios, they would have been positive um, in terms of the way they performed. You could argue they won around the ball. They just couldn't quite finish off. Um, it ended up being a spectacular success, you'd have to say, um, playing Zach Merritt, who came into the game under a huge injury cloud. Um, an interesting one was Darcy Parrish had uh, 44 touches, and I did note, including 31 handballs, did note didn't get in some of the uh, Anzac Day medal votes, including from Joe Watson. I enjoyed Job's commentary on 7 yesterday. He's got unique insight, particularly into the Bombers. He gave his Anzac Day medal votes to Ginevan, to Goey, and Howe. Moving to the Saints, they're absolutely flying, plus 149 points this season in their second half. So they're clearly fit, and they should get back Ryder, is particularly important for the Ruck, and Zach Jones, which will be a great story, hopefully as soon as this week. Um, that pretty much wraps up the news for today. We were down at Richmond yesterday. Dustin Martin edging closer to a return, did over an hour of running drills yesterday at Punt Road, spending at least four hours at the club. So he's clearly re-engaged with Punt Road. He's certainly training well. I don't think he'll play this week and join their flight to Perth on Thursday, but anything's possible. Um, Ralph Carr telling me over the weekend that Dusty will be back, and true to form, he is back in the sense that he's training and running down at Punt Road. That's a good story. Don't miss our podcast on Thursday. There's lots of news going on, obviously headlined today by this potentially significant knee injury to Brody Grundy, which is a massive blow for the Pies who showed so much character yesterday. But Triple M racks football. I'll be back on Thursday. Don't miss our podcast. That was Tom Brown's news. Come back every Monday, Thursday and Friday for more and subscribe to Triple M footy on listener or wherever you listen to get all our podcasts throughout the season. For Ream Hot Water and McDonald's, Triple M rocks footy.